there's a, a proof system called natural deduction for first order logic. So I, I've been pushing uh, resolution refutation on you pretty hard the last few weeks because that's what your assignment is about and it's like the one inference rule to rule them all. Um, but not everyone thinks that resolution refutation theorem proving is the most fun to do, especially by hand. Um, so some folks use a system where there are a zillion inference rules. Like, for example, there's an inference rule that says um, if you have, there exists x, p of x, then you can introduce some constant and just have p of the constant. So it's kind of like scolumization. Um, like that's an inference rule for that in, in that system. Um, there's, and you can go the reverse. So this is, this is existential elimination and this is existential introduction. If you have um, p of constant, you can also infer there exists an x, such a p of x. Okay, fine. Yeah, that seems like a pretty sound inference rule. Um, if you've got for all x, p of x, then we can have p of, some, of any particular constant you would want. So these are, these are inference rules that let you infer something new. Um, and people find these very natural. So this is often called natural deduction. And so it's, uh, it's an alternative to just doing resolution refutation all the time. So it's worth knowing about because you might hear people talk about natural deduction. Um, and now I promised I would talk about something other than deduction. We have been talking about deduction this whole time where you have a KB and you want to find out what is entailed by the KB. And that's, that's good, but there's more to life than deduction. Um, let's do induction first. Anyone know what induction is? Now, now I should warn you that <coughs> induction is different than like an inductive proof that you would do. That's called mathematical induction, where you say it's true for this base case, and then if I assume the inductive, I make the inductive assumption, and then I uh, prove that if it, the inductive assumption holds, it holds for this next thing in some ordered uh, sequence of things, and therefore I prove it for all things. That's uh, that's an inductive proof, also called mathematical induction, and that's a little different than inductive reasoning. So related, that's why they share the word inductive, but they are a little bit different. Inductive reasoning is where the sun rises, and then the next day the sun rises, and then the next day the sun rises, and you say, you know what? The sun, the sun rises for all x. Uh, Sun rises on day of X. Um, so induction is fundamentally unsound. I mean, maybe tomorrow the Earth will stop rotating. Who knows? I don't know. We all assume that it, it will, everything will keep going. Um, it's amazing how many biases we have. And teaching, trying to teach computer stuff tells us about those biases. For example, uh, there's the color GRU. Have you heard of the color GRU before? So GRU, uh, uh, like this pen, might be GRU if it's green until tonight and thereafter it is blue. That's a particular color. And I can't tell you whether this pen is green or GRU. I just can't. I have to make an assumption that, well, you know, things don't go around changing color on me. So therefore, if it's green now, it's going to be green forever. Therefore, it is not GRU, it is green. So, so that's, that's a different kind of reasoning than deduction. That is called induction. Make sense to folks? Induction? Yeah, so it's pretty natural. Um, abduction, that's not where like you kidnap someone. <laughs> um, abduction is, let's see if I can get this right, abduction. Abduction is a form of diagnostic reasoning where, uh, so it's deduction if I know that it's raining and when it's raining the ground gets wet. Then I can infer that the, if I know that it's raining, then I can infer the ground is wet. Yeah, but, but, but abduction 
is where I know that if it's raining, the ground gets wet, and I notice the ground is wet. And then I infer that it's raining. That's also unsound, because there might be many reasons the grass could be wet. So, exactly, maybe it's snowing when it's 33 degrees out. So when the snow hits the ground, it melts, and the ground is therefore wet. Or one thing I notice is, is you know, when the, it's warm like this, even if the ground is frozen, if you step on it, it heats the ground because of the compression. And if you lift your foot up really fast, you can see it looks a little damp. Um, that happens in the roads a lot. Uh, so anyway, so that's abductive reasoning. And it's people often do, uh, there was a big fad for abduction in the 90s. Um, everyone was building abductive reasoning systems. And the idea was that every, all these things were going to be given weights so that uh, it kind of like probabilities almost, so that you would find the most probable explanation for what you saw. Um, so weighted abduction was a big deal. Um, uh, no, it sucks. <laughs> no, well, we don't, we're not going to, we don't talk about that in this class. We're going to talk about probabilistic reasoning as the very last chunk of the class. Um, after we do learning, we're going to talk about probabilistic reasoning. And we're only going to do it in the, in the propositional case. We're not going to do first order probabilistic reasoning. Uh, so, yeah. But I just wanted to mention abduction because it's cool. Um, so, any questions about these crazy other modes of inference? Yeah, Dan. So, are all forms of diagnostic abduction? No, no, no. You can have deductive diagnosis. Um, so, A lot of diagnosis engines return multiple sets of things where if all the things in, this, in each set, uh, for a particular set, if all those things are true, then that explains the behavior of the system. So your car does not start because it is out of gas. Your car does not start because it is blah, blah, blah. So if you take the or of all those things, then that's sound. It's not necessarily that helpful, but it is sound. 